What are the sounds that you think of when you hear the words climate change? In just 20 minutes, a flicker exploded into a 200 acre monster. This morning, a new study warns sea levels are rising in the south, accelerating rapidly since 2010. In addition to these more overt threats, there's something a little quieter that, despite sounding like it could be a brand of toothpaste, has significant impact on our climate. First of all, what is permafrost? So any earth material like rocks, soil, which is at or below zero degrees Celsius for two or more consecutive years, that's permafrost. I was drawn to the idea of making music from the sounds of permafrost because at a distance, it seems like a pretty unspectacular sonic concept. But when you look under the surface, permafrost within the frozen ground holds nearly twice as much carbon as exists in the atmosphere right now. And as the planet warms, the ground thaws and releases that carbon, among other gases, creating a vicious cycle of warming. Music and sound are my way of telling stories about climate change. So I went to Alaska with musician and composer, Dr. David Krall. And my hands are frozen. And Splice is Max Bilo, who attracted all of the mosquitoes for us. Before we learn more about permafrost thaw, let's talk about the sound it makes, or doesn't make. Oh God. Oh. There's something compelling about going in search of quiet places. We spoke with David Bechkel, a biologist and acoustician for the National Park Service in Denali National Park, who spends a lot of his time studying quiet. And he paraphrased the great filmmaker Walter Murch discussing the power of quiet in film. You use quiet spaces or silences in film to create uh, tension or pressure. And really, it's because the audience is acknowledging that that sound is absent, that the players on the stage aren't playing their instruments, and that there's this like, gap. Alaska is a pretty wonderful place to go in search of quiet, which, as David describes, is part of his job to protect, as dictated in the Wilderness Act of 1964, a law that acts as a formal mechanism for preserving federal wilderness. Uh, Congress directed us to protect outstanding opportunities for solitude and primitive and unconfined recreation. These outstanding opportunities for solitude here in Alaska might be four hours, 10 hours long, just unbroken quietude. Permafrost has been referred to as an invisible threat, but is it also an inaudible one? Uh, I was curious what you'd find, uh, incidentally. Um, mosquitoes, we found mosquitoes. A lot of mosquitoes. <laughs> Rocks or things tumbling down, I can imagine. We also managed to find some other iconic Alaskan foley. This is bear shed ASMR. It's <laughs> a pretty good sound, actually. While scouting for locations to record permafrost thaw in the Fairbanks area, our producer Max found this abandoned gold dredge, which turned out to be a gold mine for sampling. In addition to the field recordings, our musical ringer on this trip was the aforementioned Dr. David Krall, who was much better at playing the saxophone. <laughs> than he is at hiding behind trees while I interview scientists. I created all of the music you're hearing in this video using sounds and loops from the permafrost sample pack. Here's a little bit of that process. On the percussive side, I've mapped some of the sounds from the trip to a kit with sensory percussion. So I've got some of the epic sounds from the gold dredge, for example. That's all natural reverb. I love this sound too. The birds in the background. This would not be a permafrost kit without a squishy sound, of course.
present two images that represent permafrost thaw. The first is what some call a drunken forest, which is a catchy way to describe what happens when trees grow on top of thawing permafrost. I'll let the experts explain. The analogy I like to use is if you can think of like a spider web, and the webbing is where the ice is, and then when there's like no webbing, that's where there's, there's like less ice, and that's why when the ice thaws, you get this like bumpy pattern on the surface of the ground. So if you imagine your spider web, this is your webbing. And then this is the area where there's no ice, right? So this is the area with ice. And so when the top of the ice melts, your ground collapses. And now the summer is getting so warm that it happens. Now summer, summer thaw go into the ice, melts the ice, surface subsides. Next year subsides more, more, and develop this kind of thing right in the, on a time scale of a decade. Unfortunately, many people have built homes on top of permafrost. But for people who live on permafrost, and there's at least about five million people who live in permafrost regions, impact on infrastructure probably more, more serious because it's already happening. The second image is from photographer Taylor Rhodes. What you're seeing here is a river laced with iron. The iron leaches out of the ground and into the water as permafrost thaws. These images are visually stunning, but as you might imagine, scientists are concerned that the phenomenon could impact rural drinking water as well as fish and wildlife. Now, if that doesn't bring the concept of permafrost closer to home, picture the sheer amount of it in the Northern Hemisphere. There are approximately 9 million square miles of permafrost, which is about the United States, China, and Canada combined. In this era when climate protections are getting rolled back seemingly every minute, something like the Wilderness Act of 1964 that we mentioned earlier is a pretty refreshing concept. This is a law that states, rather poetically, quote, a wilderness, in contrast with those areas where man and his own works dominate the landscape, is hereby recognized as an area where the earth and its community of life are untrammeled by man, where man himself is a visitor who does not remain. So in the end, what is the sound of permafrost thaw? Part of it is transforming sounds from drunken forests directly into music. But I think it's also about imagination, about trying to bring to life the idea of the sinister contents, carbon, methane, and iron frozen under our feet. It's about trying to be good visitors who will not remain.